homestead. Out here kind of, been out here piddling. Uh, what I'm working on is, I've got some young, hopefully some rabbits that are going to be, please excuse the train between the dogs and the geese. It's almost midnight here, but between the dogs and the geese and the trains, seems like nothing around here ever makes a sound until I decide I want to make a video. So please excuse it, there just ain't a whole lot I can do about it. I mean, I can wring the geese in his neck and the dog's neck, but that would just kind of defeat the purpose of having them in the first place, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna try to hold off doing that for the time being at least, at least until around Thanksgiving. <laughs> we might change our mind then. I remind them of that every once in a while when they get a little rowdy. Okay, what I'm doing, this is half inch hardware cloth, okay? Cut it off a roll here. You know, I'm sure you've seen hardware cloth before. But what I'm working on is, I'm working on this boxes. I'm hoping we're gonna have some young rabbits. And this here, I've got one cut out. And what I do use with this hardware cloth, folks, my hands are pretty much useless uh, when it comes to, you know, strength or, uh, or just pretty much anything. I use these 10 snips. This wire is not really heavy gauge or anything, but I use these 10 snips to cut it. And I, I used to use side cutters, and it got to where I couldn't hardly cut nothing hardly with side cutters. But I found some. These are a Lowe's brand. I forget what it is. What, oh, no, I'll take that back. This is Crescent brand. But you see how this is made in here? It, the way that it's made, it doubles the amount of torque. So in other words, even with my weak hands, when I squeeze on this, it puts double the torque into the wire. So even with my weak hands, I can cut this wire really well. That's something to think about. I do remember I picked these up on, at Lowe's. I don't know if they still carry something like this. Seems like these were on clearance, and I got those for like $7.50 a pair, which was a real good price. Um, but this was a this come out of a three pack a cheap pair of ten snips I think that I got at Walmart it was a three pack for like ten bucks you can cut this stuff anyway that's that's what I do to cut it to me that's the easiest and also another thing is with these ten snips is if you use the right ones you can cut up there really close and you don't have a whole lot of jagged pieces sticking out there that you can scratch yourself on when you're working with this wire that helps a lot too. Okay, now the dimensions. The dimensions of these, even though I've got some dwarf breeds and I've got some bigger meat breeds, and of course Big Jake, he's a Flemish giant, so I guess later on we're gonna have some bigger rabbits. My nest boxes are 14 inches long, and these two pieces right here, these are the sides. Okay, the sides are eight inches tall, and they're gonna be 10 inches wide. Okay, so what, so what we're gonna have here, here's two sides, here's the bottom, and here's two ends. The way we put these things together is with these. You can get these at, I'm pretty sure you can get these at Tractor Supply. I buy, my, I buy mine at a Orsulin, Orsulin I think is the right way to pronounce it, Farm and Home. It's just a local Farm and Home chain uh, in, in this area. I don't know if they're nationwide or, or, or what, but Tractor Supply pretty much carries the same stuff as they do. Okay, what these are, they're called J-clips. The reason they're called J-clips is because they're clips that are in the shape of a J. Okay, and the way these work, okay, we take these pliers, okay, we take these pliers and we set the J-clip right inside the pliers like that. Now, folks, if you've if you've done this or seen this before, I'm sorry. I'm talking to the, I'm talking to the people who might be considering getting into rabbit someday, or might have just gotten into rabbit someday. I'm trying to help them out. There's some tips, okay? I've been around rabbits probably. I'm 40 years old, and I've probably been around rabbits 30 of them. And uh, I picked up some things. Some things probably good. Some things bad. But we try to we try to remember the good, forget the bad, not forget the bad, but learn from the bad. This old hardware cloth here is kind of hard to maneuver. 
Now we also use some stuff like this. Now it's a little more expensive. Let me reach over here and grab a piece of it. But it's half inch wide, but it's an inch long, the sections are. And this is a lot heavier gauge wire, but what I usually do with this is I save that when I have it. It's a more expensive wire, and I save that for the actual bottoms for my rabbit cages and my quail cages because it's a heavier gauge wire and it lasts longer. Uh, this is just for nest boxes, and you know, if you know anything about rabbits, you know your doe rabbit is only in there about, you know, probably 10, 15 minutes out of the day. And the rest of the time, the only weight that these things carry is the weight of a little bedding material and whatever kits that you have in there. So, what I'm going to do here is I've got a bottom and I've got a side. Now, the good news is, okay, this is hard to get going and get straightened out and what have you, but the good news is, is once you get it, once you get it started, it'll pretty well, these clips will pretty well pull this wire into shape and it'll go together. But what you do, I hope you can see this, you take that part right there, you put it between there, make sure both of your pieces of wire are in there together, and you just give it a squeeze. And what it does, it rolls, it rolls that clip around the wire, and it holds it together. Just slick as butter. Just like everything else that I do, when I do these, I usually put too many. Oh. Clips on, but you can space them out however you feel is necessary. You know, you can skip out. That's that's what I skip one, two, three, four, five, five squares, and I put in another one. But anyway, you see how those clips pull that wire there together? Okay. And now what I do, you know, it doesn't really matter, but I find that these J clips will wrap better. See, one side's got a single single jaw, the other side's a double jaw. I find that if you put the J, the J end or the bent end, curved end, into the single jaw, I find that uh, it just, it seems to make a better crimp. But, you know, like I say, it'll work either way. Either way. And one way you can do this is you can take and spread them out. They kind of like, I'm glad them things are so thin. They're not hard to crimp at all. I mean, there's just not much to it at all. The pliers help some. They're just little, um, just to let you know, now what I pay for these, they come in a little pound bag, and what I pay for those is $4.95 a bag, and it's a pound of them. There's just about between $450 and $500 of them to a pound. Okay, that sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot, but if I'm out here making rabbit cages, especially the big long six section ones and what have you, um, it doesn't take long to go through 500 of these. Uh, it sure doesn't. It sure, it sure don't. In my hands, I'll tell you what, the next day, I have to be, I have to be munching down on some, or swallowing some ibuprofen or something. You can hear them geese. I think it, I think that dog, uh, he's a Great Pyrenees. You know anything about Great Pyrenees is you know they never shut up. But, and that's good, he's there for a purpose. But the thing is, he wasn't making a sound until I came out here and started trying to do something. And he'll bark the whole time I'm out here and when I go inside, he'll shut up. That's, you know, uh, and I'm sorry, but He's there for a purpose, but not to to irritate me is not the purpose. Because if there was a threat out here to my animals that he's guarding, that threat would have been there before I walked out the door. It's just irritating. But on the other hand, since I've had him up, I've not lost any critters. to oh. anyway this is what happens see here we've got a box now this is you know this looks a little warped and everything and, and but bear in mind now when we get this done what we're building is a drop down this box if you watched my videos 
uh, rabbit videos before. I think I've done a video or two talking about what how I love these drop down nest boxes. Okay, and since I since I've used them, I think so highly of them that I don't want nothing else. You know, you can make these, and if you make them out of this wire right here, they're just great because, oops, you can take these boxes and you've got them fastened permanently onto the bottom of your sections of your rabbit, rabbit hutch. Okay, and what you can do is, in the summer, this wire lets air pass through. You know, you can lose kits, baby rabbits. You can lose them from heat just as much as you can a grown rabbit. I lost a grown buck here, what, six weeks or so ago? I think you, I think Dana mentioned it in a little update she did when she was out here on the phone here the other day. Uh, of course, now we've got Big Jake, so, you know, that, that that's worked out. Luckily, we've got another buck. And uh, he's so far, he seems to be doing a beautiful job. Uh, he loves his work. <laughs> he does indeed love his job. Old Big Jake, blue ribbon winner at the county fair this year. How about that? It seems like I don't know about other county fairs, but it seems like here. It seems like the little the little fancy or specialty I call dwarf breeds or whatever it seems like the judges seem to be a little more partial to them you know Flemish Flemish even though they are not really an ideal meat breed in my opinion a lot of people consider them a meat breed and I guess the judges sometimes consider them a meat breed and so therefore they want to stick with the dwarf or the fancier show rabbits I don't consider another dwarf really a fancy show rabbit but they are more desirable as far as, you know, show. People like to keep them more for show, especially more for pets because they're so small. I mean, but, you know, think of it. Think about it. Think how popular the little teacup varieties of some of the, the little toy and lap dogs are, you know. It used to be, you know, a toy poodle or, or, or a chihuahua or something like that was so desirable. Then the next thing you know, we're coming up with the teacup variety, which makes a which makes a toy poodle looks large, you know? I mean, uh, my eyesight's bad enough. I'm afraid to have a teacup chihuahua around here. I'm afraid I won't be able to see it and I'll step on it or sit on it or trip over it. Little old bitty things, I mean, I guess they're just as cute as can be, but I just, uh, well, we've got too many dogs here anyway. We've got. A, We've got a couple we're trying to find homes for now. Just we love animals so much. Sometimes they'll come along and it's just you want them at the time. And then my case is uh, after they've been with us a little while, we just realized that we've got so many and we can't take care of that many and what have you. Now, now that I've got this all done, what I do is I go back and some of the spaces. I'll go in and put another clip in between those, especially around the bottom here. And then what we're going to do is, is we're going to cut, I believe what I usually do is cut an 8 inch by 8 inch hole in the actual floor of the cage section. Now the cage section will be made out of this other stuff I showed you a while ago, that half inch by 1 inch. And I'll cut an 8 by 8 inch square and I'll put that one end of the nest box right up against the side of that opening and then run it across and you'll have some of the floor of the cage will be over this nest box, but there's going to be an 8 inch by 8 inch opening that the dough is going to use to go in and out of the nest box, okay, in order to uh, get to her babies and take care of them and to build her nest and, and what have you. Now, I've got a few does that kind of like to sit in these. Okay, bear in mind, in between litters, if there's no babies, clean the nesting material out of this. And the reason being is the doe, when she's ready, when she starts getting ready to have babies, usually about a week before she's ready to kindle or to have her babies, you'll see her and she'll start picking up straw if you're giving it to her. If she's got straw or hay or whatever, we feed ours alfalfa hay and she, they'll, they'll, bite the, they'll bite the nice tender leaves off of that alfalfa hay and leave some of them bigger 
bigger stems. I think they're kind of bitter to them, so they don't like them as well, and they'll leave them stems. But when they're getting ready to have babies, they'll drag them big old alfalfa stems and what have you, that straw down into that nest box and position it around, make a nest out of it. Now they'll, they'll usually start doing that roughly a week to, you know, five to seven days, I'd say, before they're ready to have babies. And a lot of times, uh, that'll give you a heads up, you know, because sometimes a doe will miss. And by miss, I mean, you know, you'll put her with the buck and she'll breed, they'll breed, and you'll mark the date down and everything and come to find out, even though everything seemed to have gone the way it was supposed to, she won't get pregnant. And then, so what happens is, you don't know that until about 30 days later. Well, now, here's the thing. If you know what you're watching for, and she normally goes and makes her nest about a week ahead of time, you can watch a lot of times, and you can tell. Sometimes as much as 10 days ahead of time if she's going to have babies or not. And if she's not, you don't have to wait that extra week to 10 days or whatever. You can go ahead and put her back with the buck and rebreed her, and that saves time in your breeding cycle, you know. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting the full 30 to 31, 32 days and still not end up with nothing, you know. Um, a lot of people think that it's hard on a rabbit when you're breeding them and what have you. I heard somebody up at the fair the other day say, oh, it, oh, I don't breed my rabbits when it's so hot and what have you and so on and so forth. Well, let me tell you what I found out, and this is just what I told her. My rabbits are not as healthy, my does at least, when they're not breeding. If they're not taking care of babies, they don't seem to be as healthy as rabbits. And not to mention, here's the thing, I used to think the same thing. And I would let my does have a couple of months off in the summer and stop breeding them. And you know what I'd run into? Late summer, early fall, when I start breeding them back, I'd have the same problem that I'm having right now. The does, you put them in there, the buck's ready, he's doing his thing, but the does just aren't receptive to the buck. In other words, they're not, in other words, you know, you put them in there with the buck and he does his job, but nothing happens. And uh, Now, the reason I'm having that problem right now is not because I gave them a couple months off, but it's because I didn't have a choice. Because, number one, due to the heat, Big Red went sterile, our, our buck. And then, about a month or so later, he ended up passing away for whatever reason. I can only say that it was heat-related, but I don't know that for certain. It did, he did not appear to have been attacked by anything. Now, this is kind of all, all misshapen, but don't worry about that because when you fasten it, you're going to hold it up and you're going to line it up with the wire that's on the bottom of the cage and you're going to J-clip it in place. And when you do, see, it's going to all fasten to the bottom and it's going to straighten up. Now, in the summer, this being open like this, the doe will put a little straw down here and then a day or two or sometimes just hours before she's ready to have babies she'll pull some of her hair and she'll line that nest with her own hair and she'll have her babies okay if it's warm if it's a warm time of the year within a few days she's going to take a lot of that hair number one she won't pull as much hair and number two a lot of that nesting material that she puts in there she'll pull out because she knows they don't need that much okay a good doe is smart, and she knows what they need. And you'll end up with a with a with a, a nest of babies in there, and they'll stay just the right temperature, even though it may be hot out, because there's good air, good ventilation that they'll pass through the nest because of this wire. But that's easily taken care of. Whenever it's cold in the winter, what you do, real simple, and you really should do this anyway. It makes it a lot easier to clean out. But you cut out a piece of cardboard. 10, 10 inches wide, 14 inches long, and you lay it right down in there. And then what I do, if needed, at least on the, the outer side and one end, uh, usually, the, usually the end away from the opening, I'll cut a piece and stand it up in there too. And then, and then a lot of times I'll go ahead and put a little straw in there just to help hold those pieces up. And what it is is you've got a wind block up here on the side, and she'll pack that nesting material up there against it. 
and it'll make a nice warm bed, believe it or not. And then whenever everything's all said and done, and the babies are grown up big enough that they don't really need the nesting material and what have you, in order to keep them from filling this with manure, you know, using it as their own private little bathroom, you take that cardboard, you'll reach down in here and get that cardboard and just pick it and all the nesting material and everything and pull it up out of the opening and throw it away. Throw it on a compost pile. Then, it, you know, by that time they've got, they've got a thick, thick body of fur uh, grown on them and they'll, they'll snuggle up together when they sleep or when they get cold and they'll just take care of business themselves. The babies, by the time they're a week old, they can have fur on them that's just as just about as thick as what their mama has. So, you know, when it's cold weather, the first week can be the most critical. Or I say at least until the time, you know, sometimes it can go so far, I think around 10 days they'll start opening their eyes. If you can get them to 10 days old and get their eyes open, usually, usually you're going to have success with that litter. Uh, that's when they're they're most delicate up to that point. But anyway, this is how we make a drop down nest box. And now I'm going to continue. It's, you know, after midnight, I'm, out, I'm just out here fiddling. I'm a night owl of some sorts, folks. I come out here a lot of times and fiddle around in the shop. And be first one thing to another, a lot of times, you know, it's peaceful at night. You know, just not a you know, just not a lot going on. It's nice and quiet. When I don't have a video going, sometimes I'll turn the radio on over there. I like to listen to the St. Louis Cardinals when they're playing on the radio. Of course, they're usually not on this time of night. But Anyway, uh, we'll catch back up with you tomorrow, maybe sometime, or just when I can, and we'll finish this video up. And I'll show you how, to, how we cut a hole out in the bottom of a rabbit cage. And J-clip, we just use the same J-clips and we fast, we'll fasten this cage in place on the bottom of the rabbit cage. So we'll get back with you then, and uh, so long for just a while.